You don't have to have the exact gear used in this course, but you will have to have something similar to be able to follow along. In this lesson, you're going to learn about the basic microphone, audio interface, keyboard, DAW, and other software requirements. So, in order to reproduce what you're going to learn in this video, you're going to need a bit of gear and some music knowledge. First, let's talk about gear. The core piece of gear to tackle any project like this is a DAW. DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation and has four basic components. A computer, a sound card, usually referred to as an audio interface, digital audio editing software, and at least one input device for adding or modifying music note data. I'm going to assume that you are at least somewhat familiar with these things because this course will not be going into detail about how to set up a DAW. For all the demonstrations used in this course, I will be using Reaper for audio recording, MIDI recording, and editing, but just about all multi-track recording applications capable of audio recording, MIDI recording, editing, and virtual instrument support will work just fine. Coming up in this course, you will be learning how to approach recording some of the audio elements for the cue you will be creating. To do this, you are going to need a microphone, XLR cable, and XLR inputs on your audio interface. You could get by with a portable audio recorder with built-in microphones and then sync the audio in post, and we're going to look at how to do that too. But a basic condenser microphone is probably what you want to use. You don't have to use any fancy microphones to pull this off. A condenser microphone means that your audio interface needs to have phantom power. A boom mic stand and a pop screen is also going to be handy to have. The rest of the instrumentation will be handled with virtual instruments. Although you can program these by hand with a mouse, it's much faster to have a MIDI keyboard to input the notes. Again, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I've been using this old sequencer keyboard that was made in 1993. It has 61 keys, a pitch bend, and mod wheel, and the ability to transpose the key range. Even a smaller keyboard would work for what you're going to do, but it will require more transposing of your key range, which is not a big deal. For virtual instruments, I will be using a combination of free plugins and Contact made by Native Instruments. Contact is the industry standard sampler and is a remarkable tool for music production. I could only use Contact for this course because it comes with a thousand instruments and I have a ton of additional sample libraries with many thousands of instruments. However, I understand that you may have a different instrument library, so I will try and use free stuff when I can. A lot of multi-track recording apps come with a basic virtual instrument library, so you should have no trouble keeping up no matter what platform you are using. If, for whatever reason, you don't have a basic virtual instrument library, you can get simple versions of these types of instruments – drums, bass guitar, piano, keys, etc. – very inexpensively. Because you are learning how to create a piece of music, I'm going to assume that you have some level of music theory knowledge. You won't be getting into anything heavy, but you will need to know about some basic chords, scales, and rhythms. As I mentioned in the introduction, we will be recording acoustic guitar for this cue. If you don't play acoustic guitar, don't worry. I'm sure you know someone who does. As long as they can play to a click with reasonable rhythmic accuracy, you will be fine. Now that you know what you need to be able to create your cue, you're ready to move on to the next lesson, where you're going to learn some of the things you want to think about in order to help you decide what kind of cue you want to create.